So welcome everybody, welcome to a new human experience podcast. Uh, tonight is February the 18th, 2021, and the topic is the game of life. Did you know that there is actually a, um, a game, this is like a real legitimate game, it's called The Sims. Uh, this, this game came out, I think maybe about, oh, must be 10, 15 years now already. So it came out a while back. And I remember I might even have had a copy of it or, or played that game um, some time ago. And while I was doing some um, research on how what name to give the topic for tonight, I actually uh, came across the, the the Sims game, and it's uh, apparently the uh, the mil millennials really like this because <laughs> I think they they on some level may maybe not the most conscious level on some level they know that it's it's a game this 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 life that we're living is actually a game. So let me backtrack a little bit to kind of. Um, explain how come I this is this is the topic for tonight. Uh, it, it started maybe about a week ago, and so a week ago it was Chinese New Year. Um, uh, uh, it was last Friday the twelfth. That was Chinese New Year, and you know this this being such a special year. Therefore, the, the 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 usual gathering um, for dinner at my at my family's. Did not happen. However, I did um, manage to go over to my mom's place and to pick up some um, Chinese New Year cakes. So there, there are um, a few things that my mom would make every Chinese New Year. Um, it, that's kind of like a family tradition, or, or at the very least, it's my mom's tradition. So, so this year is no um, different. She decided to, to make some for us, even though we are not going to get together for dinner, but she still wants to um, have a little bit of that atmosphere. So I went over and I picked up some Chinese New Year cake and um, not not really my thing because um, um, it's, it's, I'm kind of trying to go more vegetarian, eat less meat now. So some of the, 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 the the cake that she made had has you know, Chinese sausage in it, so I tried to really just eat very little, just maybe a taste of it. However, I do know that my my son and my daughter they they still like those things. So so I picked up some to um, to give to my daughter because my daughter. Um, lives downtown and she just does not want to travel all the way up here uh, to to my mom's um, my mom lives downtown uh, my love my mom lives uptown and she lives downtown so it's it takes over an hour to and on the subway all that um, she in her mind that it's it's something that she does not want to to risk it me of course I you know I I, my belief is that if I'm going to get ill because I, you know, traveled on the subway and caught some, some virus, whatever, then so be it. <laughs> it's, I, I'm, I live, I live dangerously, <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> so, so what I did was I, um, being the, uh, being the, the, the good mother, the nice mother in, in quotes, of course, that I am, I, I, volunteer to pick up my daughter's share of the, the Chinese goodies as well and um, met with her downtown to to give it to her and um, the and you know I'll, so I picked up the the cake from my mom and then a couple of days later I met up with my daughter and I just um, the the meeting with my daughter was just maybe about five, 10 minutes long. However, it just brought up so many things for me because when I met up with her, she some um, like, like we were like strangers. That's what it felt like. That even when I tried to, 
to ask how she's doing is and, and and what's going on that it's that that connection is somehow not there and of course that brought up so many triggers for me and um and i was really uh, that the distance between us whether emotionally um or like beliefs all of that there, there was such a a big difference and of course my my mother mode was was totally triggered and on and i felt all the guilt the sense of failure anger lack of control in other words like in the span of about the five or to ten minutes that that we met i i was just completely and totally discombobulated that's no no within about five minutes that's it was like going through my head was all oh, these thoughts was like oh she um she's she that it's somehow i felt responsible that i should have you know done better in trying to um to to talk to her uh about what really is going on and and um and also also the 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 I would say my fear that she's probably going to take the vaccine and you know she's going to be doomed she's going to be trapped in this negative timeline and it's all my fault and that I spent so much effort on waking myself up that I really neglected my 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 children's well-being that it's my fault blah 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 so that was going through my mind and it was and and also at the same time i also know that that's just a story that that's just um that's just the uh, the old programs coming out so after i met up with her what i did was i just went to the beach for a walk to soak up some sunshine it was really a very beautiful day and um, of course, being outdoors really helped um, to to kind of diffuse that that internal dialogue. And after I I um, went for you know, a fairly long walk uh, at the beach, I just picked up a big order of sushi on my way home. And I kind of, you know, when I got home, I really stuffed myself up with food. It it took me a couple of days to really process all of the emotions stories and programs that came up and it was it was just divine timing it was perfect because um the the last couple of days a big wave of energy came in and 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 whenever the the energy is is really high frequency then when it hits me and when it hits anyone the um, the effect is that whatever it is that does not resonate and, and cannot be um, you know that cannot be kind of aligned with the high frequencies that's coming in will like we will know it like that's why um, all of these emotions and things is with my daughter was was coming up. And I just know that, oh, okay, I've done a lot of the, the releasing. And this is this this one thing is, you know, really something that I haven't quite um, looked at enough yet. I haven't really um, processed it enough. So so it took me a couple of days to really um, get back to um, I would say more more at peace with um to to tell the truth do i prefer that my relationship with my daughter is different yes of course i would have preferred that and also i do know that she is doing okay um she she has a job she has a good job something that she really believes in and um, she has roof over her head. She has friends, and she still have us. She still have me, and all that. So she's in a good spot. I mean, not that I'm in in an 
relative to everything else, I think she's doing fine. And so is my son and, and all that. And that I know, even though I, on some level, I would have really wanted to like be in the mother mode. I have to save them. I have to um, like all of these, I, I should have, I, I have to, all of that. That's just um, part of the, the savior complex. Uh, it, it is a complex because um, if, you, if you listen to what Franco has mentioned and if you listen to, I would say, more of the, um, the people who really know, who, who really is in the know and spiritually advanced, they would they know none of us. None of them, I should say, none of them really want to save someone else. Because um, if you really understand what being spiritual, what being the spirit is, is that it everyone has their, we have to decide for ourselves. If we try to save someone, if there is an idea that, um, I, I think there, within the Buddhism, there is an idea of being a bodhisattva, which is that you yourself has been like, like really gone through a lot of spiritual advancement to the, to the extent that you can reach nirvana, but you stop short of that because you want to stay behind to help save the other people. So that's a bodhisattva. And that's that's really part of the, the savior mode. And when you trickle that down at really at a um, some level, a lot of human beings are playing that that role as well. We want to to help other people. We want to save other people and we want to carry other people. And that's um, it. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that if you need to save other people, then there is still something that, as, as far as I can tell, is that there's still something that you haven't quite gotten yet. And that is the power of, of our own soul. That if, that my soul actually got me, like woke me up, um, it was, I'm quite sure it was not easy because I was totally playing the, the, the human role, completely lost in it. And by, by some chance, my, my soul woke me up. It took a while, but I got here. And that each and every one's soul has their own journey. And, and so um, just because somebody did not uh, wake up at this moment, that does not mean that they are lost. There is no such thing as a lost soul because there is like, we are all one. There is only, there really is only one um, being and that is the, the universal creator, which is, um, which is really source and everyone is that everyone is part of that. We all from part of that. So if you think about it, there really is no such thing as a, a lost soul. It, it, it cannot be because how can you get lost when everything happens, happens within source, happens within the one being. There has ever only been just one being so nothing is ever lost and if my daughter or my son or someone you love or um, whomever it is that you look, look out in in the, the the population that they they're just at a different pace they are just at a different um, part of the story than we are and we can only choose for ourselves and go on with that, go on with that journey by ourselves. 
if someone else is um, is going on a parallel journey, then that is a great, and that's um, a great playing um, partner. And if they are not there uh, yet, and they they're not ready to to um, progress on that journey, if they if their soul decides to take them on a completely different tangent, then it really is the, up to the, the choice of their individual soul and to really trust, to trust that the, um, the strength of, and also the, the, the power of each soul to be able to orchestrate and to give us so many opportunities to wake up. So um, I remember reading what Emilia Benz mentioned and um, is that it's the time for trying to wake other people up is has gone that now it is really time to um, focus on your own journey and also go and find people that um, resonate with you that kind of think at more or less your level in terms of being aware of um, in terms of their consciousness and aware that there is more to being a human than just doing the the the, the nine to five and not all of those and I remember at first when I heard, hear her say that there is really a cringe, I, like I really cringe that, are you sure? Because it's, it's like, that's, that's really leaving a lot of people behind, especially because the, um, um, I would say the, for lack of a better word, the, the, the cabal of the, the, or the Illuminati, they really, um, they, they really did the best. They, they really know how to pull one over most people. So it's, they really did their best to uh, make sure that people stay asleep. And that's not fair because they are not playing fair. So I can't, I don't think it's right to um, just, you know, just, just, just kind of go my own way, and it really took. Um, I would. It really took the the last couple of months for me to finally realize that it is. Um, how should I put it? That she was right. What she was saying was really right. Um, it, it finally, I finally can understand her point of view of, and it's not because she, um, she, she didn't do that from a point of view of, hey, um, they've, they've, um, they've missed the chance. So too bad, so sad. I'm just going to, um, you know, fly on, on with, and, and carry on with my, lifeboat and and sail off to a greater place at the sunset that I she's not that's not what she's saying she's really knowing that each person has a has their own guidance and if their guidance mm, does not uh, lead to them, the, the other people starting to question what's going on, then it's, it's time to let go. Instead of trying to stay behind to, to you know, um, and to start to, and trying to, you know, drag people in that, instead of trying to drag people along um, something that, you know, in a direction that they, their soul is not ready to go yet is to really, the best thing to do is simply to go ahead 
and create the life that really resonate with you. And one day, and really have to, to uh, trust that one day, if at all, that the other people, um, their soul would help them if that is the soul's choice. The soul would help them to catch up. It, how that's going to happen, nobody knows. It, every soul is unique. So the journey that each one takes is going to be unique. We can only ever be responsible for our own creation. And so for me, that, that's really what my big, I would say, aha moment was. That was one of the big aha moment was to really get, really um, understand that from a point of view that that, that truly is at another level of um, raising my own consciousness. And the other part is that um, it's also to the process, all of this process, how, how I was able to process all the emotions, even though the, 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 the emotions that came up was you know, really um, still quite intense, was that the, the biggest, I would say the, the, the most helpful part was realizing that my reaction, the, the, the person who reacted was not me. It was a part of me or it was an identity of me, the identity of, of you know, being in the, the mother mode of really to be in the savior mode. That's, that's not, that's, that's not why, well, okay. I would say that that's a fraction of me, but that's not the totality of me. That even though I was, I felt triggered, really triggered to the extent that I really need to go for a walk at the beach and, um, you know, stuffed up and stuffed myself up with, um, with food that evening. However, I, even when I was doing all of that, I still, a part of me still know that, that's a story. That's really an identity. And, and I was um, going through that, all of that reaction at, on one level, but at an, on another level, I also know that this too shall pass. I, I know that this is, this is a face. This is just something that needed to come up and be looked at. And and be processed. It's not, it's not, it's, it's a, it's a trigger, absolutely. But that I am, I am, how should I, what's the best way of putting it is that, yes, um, it's, I can't control that emotional, though that emotional things coming up, I cannot control it because that is still somewhere that I have to process that. And by process, I simply mean that just being with that, not trying to stuff it back um, down again, but really to, to witness myself going through that, that emotion, going through that trigger and being okay with all of that emotions coming up and, and being okay with being uncomfortable with those emotions because those emotions were there and they, like if and they're supposed to be um, uncomfortable. And, and so just allow them to be uncomfortable for as long as it takes for me to get through that, to, to walk through that, wade through that, that um, I would say, paw, mutt, that, that mutt field of emotions. And from the other way, um, at the other end, I, I came back out, which I know I would. And I also got to see um, 
a lot of the programs that came up and also I got to see, to really know that uh, I do have a choice that yes, I have a certain part of personality, but that's just, it's not something that is cast in stone. It's, it's not something that um, I'm inflicted with and there's nothing I can do, that I do have a choice. I do have a choice. And it's actually by really letting go of trying to control how I feel and trying to keep my myself in composure and just allowing myself to just go through that all of that emotion. And it actually um, helped me let go of it easier and at a you know, much shorter time frame. And just it only took me maybe about two, three days to really got to the part where, okay, I got it. It's, um, that is, that's the game. So all of these, these uh, stories that I'm telling myself, that's really part of all that, that complex about, and, and that at the, at the other end of the tunnel, I thought I really got to the point where I was able to step away from that story and be able to, to know that, yes, there is all that going on. However, I'm really not available to listen to these stories anymore. They, I've been playing with these stories, these feelings of guilt, um, things that I think I should, should be doing, um, the, the people that I think I should be responsible for. And I was, and I know that, um, you know, I'm not available to drop my, to, to hang on to all these thoughts, because I know that hanging on to all these thoughts is simply going to um, like drop my own way of thinking. And I've gotten to the point where I feel I, I have access to so much bliss, to so many things that are going well, that I'm, I'm not interested in playing in those lower frequencies anymore. It's not because I don't have compassion, it is just, I'm done. I'm not interested in playing in those frequencies. And if someone else want to, then they, it is their choice. It's just not going to be my choice anymore. So it goes back to understanding that who we truly are is really beyond the identity that we have adopted for, for the time being. And as long as we, we really still um, cling on to those those um, stories and, and really consenting to play in the, the, the lower frequencies, then that's, then we're not ready to, to move on. And when we are ready to move on, then those stories don't have any um, attraction anymore. And so I've come to that. And that's, that's kind of my journey for the last week, and which is what I want to, to share with all of you. Um, and also, of course, um, it's kind of very much in line with what uh, Franco has been saying is that, you know, this, this, everything is a game. And um, what is going playing out in the in the collective right now is is a game, and um, all of the the people that are talking about oh um, all it's all just a game, and it's it's like when I I actually um, maybe about maybe even about. Um, 
let's see, when was that? Probably about a month ago, that was when uh, all that, you know, the, the, in the US, the, the president, we really have the, a new president and, and all of that, the playing out, I was, I was still kind of interested to, to, to read all the stories, all the, the ins and outs and, and kind of blow by blow reporting of all that from the alternative media. Um, you know, now it's like, I am not really even interested in all that anymore. It's, it's more of the, um, more stories that some people needed to, to know that, you know, everyone should know what the truth is because then for whatever reason, um, they would be exonerated or, you know, they're, to prove that they're right. I'm getting to the point where, um, okay, I, I, I might every now and then just um, peek my head up or maybe talk to um, one or two people just to just give me a synopsis of what's happening and then still not really giving much, I would say, not giving much attention to all of that anymore and, and rather to simply focus on, so this is where we are now. So where do I want to go next? And, and I think it's, it's really part of letting go, letting go of the, the 3D game, um, not even the, like not, not only the, the, the inverted matrix, but also the, the more traditional 3D, even organic 3D, it's, it's like less and less interest in playing with that, that, um, that version, that, that version, uh, that Sims version, let's say. And um, that's, that's me sharing my journey for the past week and how I got to where I am right now. So let's, um, let's kind of uh, 